Hello and welcome to Kirsty Does Stuff. My name is Kirsty and I've been away for a little while. I do apologise, holidays and all sorts. But I'm back now with this horrific look at our sun lounge. This is a room at the back of our house that gets all the sun and it's been used for, well, as you see here, a bit of a dumping ground really. Um, when the sun's come back from university, all their stuff just gets dumped in the sun lounge. All my plants were there. It was my sort of potting area. Um, there's just, as you see, the blinds have fallen down. The the wallpaper at the back that was testers that I put up over a year ago with the paint. Um, and I always meant to do something with it, but literally didn't have the time, you know, and things built up in there. Plants were dying at the back and I couldn't reach them to water them. <laughs> All sorts of things. So this is us. We came back from holiday. I decided I had another couple of days off work. Let's just get stuck in. So this is me and my husband kind of clearing stuff out, trying to find somewhere to put all the plants, um, all the furniture. Uh, there's certain bits of furniture that we could get rid of straight away, like this this old, it was an old TV table that was in the house when we moved in actually. And, and when we got our own TV table, I moved it into the sun lounge to put plants and things on. So that was quite easy to take apart. You see me doing it there. And um, then we could take that away to the dump. Uh, this is the boys. Um, that's my husband, Andrew, and middle son, Joe, trying to take apart this chair that's been in the sun lounge forever. Uh, it wasn't easy done. We actually bought it in Bali before we got married. We bought a whole suite of furniture like that and got it imported. So we had a bit of attachment to it, but all gone now. Um, right, horrible blinds come down. And there's so many spiders' webs and beasties and all sorts. But quite glad to get all that down. And uh, in the bin. That's Betty. Not been much help at all. Hi there. Kirsty here. Um, so, where we are just now, I was up late last night finishing the lining paper. Um, and it goes... All the way up there, all the way around here, and all the way on that wall. You can see the two different colours of lining paper there. That's because I managed to buy two different weights, which I don't know how I managed that. But because this bit is going to be under the actual nice new wallpaper, I thought it's not going to matter much, so I'll use it anyway. Um, so the paint that I bought originally for all the other walls, I decided against and uh, so now I've bought the original choice which was a sage green and uh, so I'm going to start painting today. Exciting, we're getting somewhere. Hello, <laughs> I'm not sure how many days we are into the project now. I've been sort of doing it evenings, weekends and obviously working during the week. So where we are now in this stage, which might be quite near the end, is um, I have lined all the walls. There we go. And that wall, this wall, has they've both been painted in sage green after much deliberation but I really like it now. I think it's very calming. I think it'll offset the feature wallpaper really well. And today we're going to tackle the feature wallpaper. This has been lined. As I've said before, it's two different types of lighting paper. That's why it's a different colour. Um, just because I bought the wrong kind. But it's fine. <laughs> the wrong weight. The different weights were different prices. Um, so yeah, so now you can come with me as I do the feature wall. Uh, so massive disclaimer, I am in no way a professional decorator. I learned a bit from my father-in-law when we moved into this house and we didn't have enough money to get the place decorated professionally. And I really enjoyed it. So I've done the whole house myself. Um, and every time I do it again, I learn a bit more. Uh, <laughs> this time, external corners I've learnt about. 
uh, because they were all bubbling up and also this room's quite problematic because today it's a very cool day you can see outside um, it's quite a cold day almost but last Saturday was boiling hot in here so uh, the wallpaper started peeling off that I just put up so <laughs> you live and learn <laughs> um, but I'm very pleased with what we've done so far and today's the exciting day with the feature wall. So um, hopefully, fingers crossed, after buying the wallpaper about a year ago, having a sample of it and other ones up on the wall for over a year, we're now going to put it up. Fingers crossed. Let's hope it goes well and let's hope it looks as good as I think it's going to look. Um, right, so let's mix up some wallpaper paste. Okay, here we go. Um, now, I think what I'm going to do first is get my spirits level. Now, this is when my father-in-law taught me how to hang wallpaper. Uh, it was, uh, what do you call it? Like the drop weight that you put up, a plumb line. I think it's a plumb line. And you hang it and then you draw a line down. But... A simpler way to do it is just to use a spirit level and that will give you, you know, a level surface, a straight line to hang your first bit of wallpaper. Um, so, of course, because I've put the lining paper up, I need to put, and I didn't, I've never actually, and I've never really had an issue, but I've never cross-lined. I've never lined horizontally. I've always done it vertically and then put the, the actual decorative wallpaper on top of it, but obviously not in the same place as the um, as the edge of the wallpaper. It would never line up the edges. I'd always put the new bit of wallpaper in the middle to cover an edge. Therefore, the weight of it wouldn't pull the whole thing down. It would cover the edge. So you'd never get two edges together, if that makes sense. Um, so, a uh, <laughs> bit of silliness here because I hadn't actually um, quite recently put up wallpaper in our bedroom um, and that was beautiful sort of Laura Ashley wallpaper and uh, that uh, had a horrible repeat on it where you had to cut out almost a, mass, a metre of wallpaper each time you did it which made it very expensive but when I did this, <laughs> hands up, I completely forgot about the repeat. So I put the first piece up and then I cut a second piece exactly the same. And I completely forgot that I would need to see where the pattern was at the top and line it up and then cut the bit out in between. So the second bit, I think... I, I, I think I tried to use it a couple of times but I couldn't so because when you took the bit out the top it left it short at the bottom so luckily I'd I, I always try to sort of over buy wallpaper because nine times out of ten you can take it back to the shop if you don't use a roll and they'll take it back Um, the shop I bought this from even though I'd bought it a year ago, they still had it in stock. So, you know, I'm sure I could have taken it back. But I had three rolls just for this short wall at the back. And I ended up using two in a bit. <laughs> so it was probably perfect. Right. Um, I might play some music now so you can just watch me as I put up some wallpaper.
As you can see, we've completed the room, or I single-handedly completed the room. The kids helped me put the sofa together, but it's all done. I'm really chuffed with it. Um, what I've got to do today is, oh, see behind me there? Hang on, I'll turn it round. Okay, I bought this potting bench from home base and they delivered it during the week and it's going to take some putting together. I thought it'd be nice in here as well as a relaxing place to sit and read and have a coffee and just enjoy the plants and relax. I thought it'd be nice to um, still be able to pot up my plants here. So this potting bench was uh, reduced from £60 I think in home base to £40. So I thought that's a good deal and it looks really nice and it's got hooks to hang all your all my tools and things but I do need to put it together as you can see it's in bits so I'm gonna do that now wish me luck instructions right I don't know what tools I need I'll need to investigate the fear of God into every time you do like a put together furniture project is the big bag of screws and things. Uh, there seems to be a lot but we'll hear. So that's the top bit that's got the sort of galvanised steel or metal, galvanised metal it just called. So it's easy to clean for potting things up. I'll put this over here. Lightweight, um, solid construction, galvanized metal work surface. Doesn't say what it's made of, it's a very lightweight kind of wood, but do the trick. Okay, my good screwdriver seemed to have disappeared, but I found one um, cross hatch or whatever you call it. Um, and I found a couple of other ones that I could use, so hopefully I've got enough to do it. Let's give it a go! Hello there. Right, it's a bit further on again and I just wanted to show you what the Sun Lounge looks like now, what it looks like tonight. <laughs> um, started this project sort of second week of September it must have been um, and now we're sort of mid-October and uh, we're sort of, well I'm getting bits and pieces as I see them to that I think I'll need in here. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll spin around. There's the, oops, standing on something. There is the table that we made just a moment ago in the video. <laughs> it's very useful. I've potted a few things up on it now. 
and uh, I'm desperate to sort of keep it tidy though, whereas before it was a real mess. And um, we've got some blinds up now. There we go. They're lovely. They look quite trans, or not transparent, but they look um, like you can see through them from this angle, but from the outside when you roll them down, you really can't. So it's it's perfect. Lovely IKEA sofa, which is great, but when the orange cat sits on it, when Chili sits on it, it's just a fluff magnet. Um, I've got this stand for some plants here, but I might get another one. I might get another stand just to keep them tidy in here. A few fairy lights. And uh, I've still got my plumerias down here. Even though it's October, they're still going, still no flowers. But some are looking healthier than others, just three there. Uh, and um, I'll get flowers off them one day. <laughs> if I pretend they're in Bali or something, they'll love it. Uh, okay, uh, now I want to show you this. I bought this from a charity shop ages ago, £15. And I thought, oh, I'd love to pick that up. I'd love to have a, a little bit of chandelier action in the house. Um, but of course, never did it. Sort of hung in the hall, but not connected to anything. But I thought it would be perfect for the Sun Lounge. But there's no electricity in the Sun Lounge, apart from one cable that comes through from a plug on the other side. So we've got an extension cord there and everything's connected to that on timers. Um, but then I had an idea. So here it is. I'll turn the camera around actually, that'd be easier. Okay, it's a bit dusty. I washed it when I first got it, but now it's got dusty again. Um, so yeah, it's not hugely heavy for a light fitting, but it's quite solid. And I want to sort of try to oops, attach it up on the roof, but the roof looks like this. So I was thinking maybe I could attach it from a bracket to the wall. Not sure, not sure, not come up with any decent idea yet. But what I have come up with is it doesn't have to be connected to the mains. It doesn't have to have actual proper lights in it because I'll show you what I've got. Okay, so I got these and they are battery operated lights. Um, with little crystals on them and they go different sort of they can go clear they can go sort of pastel colors they can flash they can do lots of things so they're not sort of specifically Christmas <laughs> they are all sorts of different nice colors and I thought I would loop them round the chandelier and they're remote controlled, so we could put that up somewhere and the lights would be going off so it would be very decorative. Um, so that's the idea, but I still not worked out a way to sort of secure the chandelier up there so it's not going to fall down. I think that looks pretty pretty. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the next project. I want to show you this as well. This is very clever. I love this. Right, I got this table from Amazon and it's turned round to face you so you can see it, but you could have it anyway. And they do lots of different styles of side tables um, and even like a record player table. And in the table is a, two USB ports and two plugs, which is hugely helpful, I think, really useful. So when I'm sitting here reading my Kindle, I can just plug it in if it starts to lose power or plug my phone in, whatever, while I'm sitting here. And it's perfect. So the other end, there's a cable from the table that you just plug into the wall socket and you're good to go. I thought that was so clever. I've not seen anything like that before. Okay, well, thank you for sticking with me through this madness video that's taken over about a month and a half of this room 
really. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's been quite a transformation for us and I love sitting in here and just chilling and reading and enjoying life. Um, it's not 100% finished yet, but it will be long once we get this light fixture somewhere fitted. Um, and uh, yeah, apart from that, it's pretty much done and we're really enjoying it. So I hope you're all well and uh, life has been good to you and I'll see you again soon in my next video. Take care, bye-bye.